latest news in North Central Washington, go to ncwlife.com or find us on Facebook. Got a news tip? Email us at news at ncwlife.com or call 888-2020. Good evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. In for Grant Olson, I'm Eric Granstrom on this Tuesday, June 12th, 2018. Before we get to today's top news stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. It was a little cooler than we expected today with the cloud cover a little thicker than we expected as well. Temperatures in the upper 70s throughout most, or it was expected to be in the upper 70s throughout most of North Central Washington, really hit the low 70s. We'll see what's in store for us for the weekend as we get through the rest of the work week. Going to be kind of a mixed bag as we step forward. And now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. Police are looking for your help in a home burglary in Efreda. Road work on uh, bridge decks is beginning at Stanquami Pass that will certainly have an impact on travel in the passes. And a large music festival is coming to Kashmir this weekend. Get your dancing shoes on. But first, we begin tonight. Calmer weather conditions this morning are helping firefighters in Grant County battling the Soap Lake Fire. Firefighters battled gusty winds and active fire behavior into the night last night. State mobilization was initiated and resources from around the state are arriving to assist. It's now estimated at 2,000 acres. About 13 units worked hard overnight with other Grant County units and the fire is now estimated at 50% contained. All District 13 units have been released. Grant County Sheriff Tom Jones reported that areas that were placed under level two and level three evacuations remained that way. That was as of this morning. The Grant County Sheriff's Office releases a video featuring suspects in June 7th burglary at a home in Efreda. The suspects can be seen here rummaging through personal belongings inside the home located on Road 6 Northwest. Authorities say they believe the same suspects burglarized the same home back in April. Now, if you recognize them, you're asked to call with an anonymous tip to 509-762-1160. That's 509-762-1160. Well, a big heads up for people who use I-90 Snoqualmie Pass. Starting today, the westbound lanes between milepost 52, the summit of Snoqualmie Pass, and milepost 47 at Denny Creek are reduced to two lanes 24-7 until mid-August as DOT crews continue major work to repair bridge decks. During this work, one westbound lane will shift to the eastbound lanes, while another westbound lane will continue westbound. Uh, please be alerted and uh, prepare for delays. Well, the 16th annual Wenatchee River Bluegrass Festival returns this weekend to Chelan County Expo Center in Kashmir. On this morning's Wake Up Wenatchee Valley, event organizer Chuck Egner told host Dan Kuntz that convincing national bluegrass acts to come to Kashmir is not a problem. We have a unique situation here that we don't have as much bluegrass as they have in the southeast. There's a festival every weekend within 50 miles of each other. Out here, they get a packed audience of people that are staring at them and listening to them. In the southeast, a lot of people are talking, yakking, because they see this the all music the time. is an afterthought almost. Yeah. yeah, and it's still a good party and the bands get paid, and, but here they are listened to, and these bands really want to be listened to. Now headlining the uh, bill both Friday and Saturday night is Flat Lonesome from Tennessee. Now that's talent right there. Not only can he play the guitar and sing, but he can chew gum at the same time. The festival runs Friday through Sunday and includes workshops, jam sessions, potlucks, food, drink, and various vendors. Camping is available on a first-come, first-served basis. For more information, you can log on to coffee or make that cashmere, coffeehouse.com. 
Coming up next, the final two pieces of a land swap puzzle have come together in Chelan County. The city of Kashmir has a new interim mayor and the uh, East Wenatchee City Council has a full agenda tonight, including selecting a new member. I'm Eric Grandstrom and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Todd's a great boss. Sometimes he can be a little intense. Adam, how about a lunchtime run? Uh, I'd love to, Todd, but I got a lot. Oh, Mr. Jones, you made it. I'm glad you can make it. You're really gonna love our lifetime warranty on all new Honda. Let's, let's walk and talk. Oh, the running thing? It gets some hustling. I consider myself a great motivator. J&J Snack Foods makes a lot of dough-filled products. It's really hard to attract labor in this area. We've reached out to Goodwill, and Goodwill came through to help us get that achieved. John started here at the plant a couple of months ago. We promoted him to a dough maker. He's been doing well. I'm actually doing great. I'm finally getting more notice and appreciated for my work here. I love the products we make here. If you're struggling finding the labor that you need, reach out to Goodwill. Goodwill, there's more behind the store. With 15,000 square feet to explore, you'll find something special at the Antique Mall at Kashmir. For the do-it-yourselfers and those with a keen eye for making something old, fresh and new again, the Antique Mall at Kashmir is the place to come find your next project. From the coin enthusiasts to avid collectors, Antique Mall at Kashmir has treasures in every corner. Come find your treasure today. Antique Mall at Kashmir's friendly staff is here to help. Stop on by today. And welcome back to the evening news here on the NCW Life Channel. I'm Eric Granstrom filling in for Grant Olson. Well, the last two remaining sections of land in the Stemilt Basin that are part of a major land swap have now been transferred to the state. The talks began in 2007 by the Stemilt Partnership, a group comprised of orchardists, outdoor enthusiasts, irrigation districts, and conservationists to set aside four large sections of land. Two of the parcels were transferred back in April. Chelan County Commissioner Kevin Overbay tells NCW Life News Director the two remaining DNR-owned lands were transferred to the Department of Fish and Wildlife just last week. And that basically adds about 1,276 acres to the Clockham Wildlife Area. And um, what that does is that provides an opportunity uh, for uh, recreation, you know, hunting, things like that. And that will basically uh, seal that property up as far as in perpetuity, you know, for generations to come. And uh, that was one of the, uh, the major uh, elements, you know, that uh, uh, and goals of the Stemilt Partnership was to, to have the acquisition of that. And so now we're moving into the next phases, which is the recreational planning in the uh, Skullchuck Stemilt Basins and uh, still looking for public comment. That comment period's open until uh, June 18th. Okay, so who did they uh, submit their comments with? That can be uh, submitted to, uh, in care of Aaron McKay, or our Department of Natural Resources, or excuse me, our, uh, yeah, Natural Resources Department here at the county. Through Mike Caputo's office. Through Mike Caputo's office, correct. The lands contained in the swap will be protected as mule deer and elk habitat. The next round of talks will focus on possible motorized or non-motorized recreation, including hiking and biking trails. The city of Kashmir has a new interim mayor following the departure of Jeff Gomes. The city council has appointed council member Jim Fletcher to serve out the remainder of Gomes' term, with, uh, which expires next year. The Wenatchee World reports that Gomes has indicated he intends to file for the position in next year's election. Fletcher currently serves as mayor pro temp. Uh, Fletcher works for the Chelan County Port District as the manager of the Port's Small Business Development Center. The East Wenatchee City Council meets in special session tonight. They are scheduled to interview the nine candidates who have filed for a council seat that was vacated with the retirement of Sandra Court McCourt. The nine candidates to be uh, questioned are Jerry Anderson, Ken Del Duca, Christopher Gaynor, Mark Harley, Tom Irvin, Christine Johnson, Shane Magdoff, Leon McKinney, and Kelly Vancia. The uh, meeting billed as an informal question and answer session. It starts at 6.30 at East Wenatchee City Hall. The council's final selection will be announced at their regular meeting on the 12th. 
You're watching the NCAW Life Evening News. Coming up next, I'll have your sports update and our features story today. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Stay with us. Oh, hey, Nate. What you doing there? I'm just reading a book. A book? I didn't even know they made those anymore. Where'd you get it? Right down the street at Yield Bookshop. Yield Bookshop? I'm going to go check it out. If you're looking for a good book to read or you're in the market for some beautiful handcrafted creations from local artisans, look no further than Yield Bookshop right in the heart of downtown Wenatchee. Pizza, we believe in real food, freshly prepared with only premium ingredients. Our cheeses are imported from Italy. Our sauces, dressings, and even our sausages are made in-house fresh daily. Featuring Northwest craft beers and 30 Chelan Valley wines and ciders. Family fun and amazing food. Eat local, drink local, and be local at Local Myth Pizza. Come see why Sunset Magazine says you can't beat Local Myth Pizza. And now it's a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy Tuesday. Thanks for watching us here on the NCW Life Channel. Well, maybe it would have been better to get another rainout in Portland yesterday for the Wenatchee Apple Sox. Wenatchee lost both ends of a makeup doubleheader to the Pickles. And the opener, Portland center fielder Joey Cooper, had a solo home run in the bottom of the second. And the Pickles went on for a 3-0 win over Wenatchee. Connor Perel, uh, make that Pellerin, took advantage of a shortened seven-inning game to earn the win on the mound, going four innings of scoreless ball, striking out eight and allowing just two hits. Grady Miller took the loss for the Apple Sox, allowing three runs on four hits in four and two-thirds with six strikeouts. The only highlight of the day for Wenatchee, and maybe the highlight of the season, was the catch in deep, and we mean deep left field, by Sam Waterman on a ball hit by the Pickles' Daniel Lopez. Miller's allowed two runs, both of them earned so far on two hits. Struck out two. Oh, oh, this oh, one's oh, hit oh, high oh. in the air to left field, ranging back and catching the ball and going over the fence is the left fielder Waterman. What a play! Call Sports Center on that one. Oh, wow. Holy cow, Waterman made a heck of a catch. Caught it in stride, made contact with the ball, and held on to it. What a dramatic top first out for the bottom of the fourth. Certainly should be a Sports Center top 10 voice of the Apple Sox, Joel Norman, with the play by play video courtesy of the Portland Pickles. Now, in the nightcap, however, the highlights all belong to Portland. Uh, Brady McVeigh and two other Pickles pitchers combined on a one hit shutout as Portland beat Wenatchee 9 0. Carson Brashears helped the Pickles play add on in the fourth. Jamie Flynn had the play by play. Alex Garcia, the third baseman. Mason Marinko, the shortstop. Joey Magro, the second baseman. And at first base, Sam Swenson. They're all in at the grass. Brashears turns on this one and sends it deep to right. And it is down and going to the wall for extra bases. Cooper walks into home to score the fourth run. Brashears has a couple RBI to his name. He's on second with an RBI double. Pickles lead the Apple Sox 4-0. Now, Wenatchee dropped to two and three with the sweep and now heads to Corvallis for the first of three games tonight. Curtis Boffus will get the start for the Sox against the Knights' Aaron Shoup. That first pitch at 635. Also in West Coast League play last night as we turn to the Les Schwab scoreboard. Cowlitz held on to beat Port Angeles 4-3 in a non-league game. Yakima beat uh, Northwest Honkers by three field goals. 13-7 the final there. The sweep by Portland dropped the Apple Sox to two games out of first place behind Yakima Valley. The lefties are a half 
half game back. Bellingham is five and four at a game back, while Victoria game and a half back in the standings. Now, besides Wenatchee at Corvallis today, it's Cowlitz at uh, Port Angeles. Bellingham's at Ben Kelowna hosting Victoria. Yakima Valley on the road at Portland. Nelson Cruz hit two home runs, and the Seattle Mariners came from behind to beat the LA Angels 5-3 at Safeco Field last night. Mike Trout and Albert Pujols homered back to back in the top of the first to spot the Angels a 2-0 lead. But Cruz helped Seattle come back in the bottom of the first with a two-run shot to tie it. Cruz and Ryan Healy homered in the fourth to put Seattle up 5-2. Trout homered one more time. That was in the eighth, and that would make the final score 5-3. Manager Scott Service says he was really happy his club bounced back. Two-run win, but it felt like one run because <laughs> he was sitting there. But, uh, uh, good ball game. Uh, you know, I thought our guys... Uh, you know, really responded well. They jump out with a couple home runs there in the first inning, and it was great. Uh, you know, Nelson just absolutely smoked the ball off, off Heaney, and Heaney's been throwing the ball really, really well. I think he went to a complete game last time out, but, you know, kind of getting us right back in the ball game there in the bottom of the first, I thought it was huge. And obviously, Cruz followed that up with some more stuff later on. Um, but, you know, the bullpen was really solid tonight. So, uh, nice win, nice way to start the homestand. And uh, again, it wasn't a one run win, so uh, we'll take those two. Cruz homered, as homered that is, in four of his last six games, and Service says it certainly looks like he's feeling well. Yeah, it certainly looks that way, health-wise. He, he feels good uh, about his swing and, and where his body's at right now, which is, which is great. And home run hitters, it, it goes in streaks. You know, you'll see guys hit, you know, five, six, seven in a 10-day period. They just get in that groove, and, and he's certainly in a, in a really good groove right now. So uh, hopefully we can ride it for as long as we can. I think we'll look up at the end of the year and you'll get a typical Nelson Cruz year here. Um, and I was off to a slow start early and everybody's like, oh, you know, where's this going? And, you know, he's right at the ship. He's, he prepares so well. Uh, he just gives you everything he's got every day and you know, he's getting great results right now. Seattle and L.A. play again tonight at 7:10. Mike Leak on the mound for the Mariners. Jaime Barria going for the Halos. Houston was idle last night, so the M's gained a half game in the American League West with Seattle's ninth win in their past 11 games. The Mariners now 42 and 24. The Halo or the Astros 42 and 25. The Angels dropped to 37 and 35 and a half games back. Oakland's at 34 and 32, eight games back. Texas on the bottom, looking up at 27 and 41. Time for our feature today. A proposed strategy for the future management of Icicle Creek is now available for public review. A draft environmental impact study has been released by the Washington State Department of Ecology in collaboration with Chelan County. Commissioner Keith Gator says the document is the product of years of planning. The Icicle strategy was put together uh, five, it's been five years ago, 2012, actually almost six years ago now, that uh, that's when it began, and that was to try and address the concerns that we had for in-stream flows, uh, more predictable uh, water for those who have the rights to the, uh, the icicle. Uh, it addresses domestic use. It really tries to, to take care of the hatchery issues, which was really the impetus for the whole strategy. Mike Caputa and I were back in Washington, D.C. last week, and we we'd had some very productive conversations with our electeds and also the, the, uh, the different departments, Bureau of Reclamation, Fish and Wildlife, and then we also talked with the Forest Service as it relates to the eight mile uh, issue. But uh, the EIS has been put out, it's out for comment. Uh, you can comment until uh, June 27th, and uh, we would encourage you know, input from the public. But it's been a long process to, to get to this point. What uh, kind of a timeline are you working with? Where, where would you like to see a final document? Well, we'd like to see it, you know, soon. Uh, I, I'm not sure exactly. I know it's out for, uh, it was out for like a 90-day period for uh, comment. And as soon as we get the comments, they'll be processed. And then as soon as possible, uh, within, I'd like to think by the end of the year, we might be able to have a document. Commissioner, when last we spoke, uh, the Phase 1 uh, repairs to the 8 Mile Lake Dam had been completed. Uh, can you give us a status report now on what's happening up there? Well, last week there was about, uh, on Thursday when we got the update, there was about 8 inches more of water that could be drawn down. And so, you know, everything seems really pretty good. When I say pretty good, I mean it was a real emergency situation. Everyone downstream was notified to be on the alert. They've installed monitors both in the lake and in the, the stream itself. So they are closely monitoring any discharges from the lake. But as far as uh, the next steps, uh, you know, once they got that excavator up there, which they had to fly in, and got the, the earthen portion of the dam 
pretty well uh, lowered so that it was a much wider spillway, which allowed for more discharge. It, it really alleviated the major concerns. Now, the uh, e Icicle Creek EIS is available for review on the Chelan County website. Comment period ends July 30th. We'll be back with a recap of some of our top stories and your complete local weather forecast right after this. So Pam, how's your mom doing? She's okay. She's struggling. She'd like to stay in her house and it's getting harder for her to do the daily chores. What kinds of problems is she having? Just basic house cleaning, you know, uh, taking care of her house, yard work, taking care of her medicine. Mm -hmm. It does sound exhausting. It is very exhausting and I always worry about her. Aging and adult care can assist you or your loved one to remain comfortably and safely in their own home. Contact them today to start the conversation. Lakeshland Mailboxes is a small place with a lot to offer. Job one is shipping and receiving from A to Z. They pack it, they label it, they ship it. But did you know we also offer notary service, online computer access, legal forms, copies, greeting cards, and of course, mailboxes. Chelan Mailboxes, everything you need in one small package. Join the NCW Life Channel for live coverage of the commencement ceremonies for Westside High School June 14th and Wenatchee Valley College June 15th. Coverage brought to you by AutoMoca with six locations in the valley to serve you. Global Car Care, they speak your car's language. And by Vominos Junk Haulers, big or small, they haul it all. Celebrate with the class of 2018 live on your local TV station, NCW Life Channel and ncwlife.com. And welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Eric Granstrom filling in for Grant Olson. Calmer weather conditions this morning are help, helped firefighters in Grant County battling the Soap Lake Fire. Firefighters battled gusty winds and active fire behavior into the night last night. State mobilization was initiated and resources from around the states were arriving to assist. It's now estimated at 2,000 acres. District 13 units worked hard overnight with other Grant County units, and the fire is now estimated at 50% contained. All District 3 units have been released. Grant County Sheriff Tom Jones reported that the areas that were placed under Level 2 and 3 evacuations remained in effect as of this morning. Well, the Grant County Sheriff's Office releases a video featuring suspects in June, on a June 7th burglary at a home in Efreda. The suspects can be seen here rummaging through personal belongings inside the home located on Road 6 Northwest. Authorities say they believe these same suspects burglarized the same home back in April. Now, if you recognize them, call in your anonymous tip at 509-762-1160. That's 509-762-1160. Well, a big heads up if people use uh, I-90 starting uh, today, the westbound lanes between milepost 52 at the summit of Snoqualmie Pass and milepost 47 at Denny Creek are being reduced to two lanes 24-7 until mid-August as DOT crews continue major work to repair bridge decks. During this work on westbound lanes will shift to the eastbound lanes while another westbound lane will continue westbound. Uh, you're advised to stay alert and be prepared for delays. Well, a big bluegrass festival is coming to Kashmir this weekend here in the Wenatchee Valley. We had a guest on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley earlier this morning to talk about the event and uh, besides uh, the, uh, of course, the food and there's tons of entertainment in featuring a uh, band on Friday night and Saturday night by the name of Flat Lonesome from Tennessee. Let's take a look. Cap Jackson Town. It's going to be a great festival this weekend. It runs Friday through Sunday, includes workshops, jam sessions, potlucks, food, 
drink and various vendors camping available on a first come first served basis. For more information, log on to CashmereCoffeeHouse.com. Well, it was another day of cooler than normal temperatures across most of north central Washington as we get to our forecast with high cloud cover today. Let's first take a look at out our weather window and uh, pretty much this is the case for all of north central Washington with uh, high overcast thick enough though to keep our temperatures cooler than expected. We didn't quite make our expected high 77 for the Wenatchee Valley today because of a few brisk winds this morning and a thicker cloud cover keeping conditions cooler. The only moisture in the northwest off the southeast tip of Vancouver Island. A colder front will move through the northwest by Friday and Saturday and may bring us some rain. The front half and the back half of the system looks pretty nice with sunshine on Thursday and on Sunday with temperatures by the end of the weekend expected to be back up into the middle 80s. The normal highs for this time of year, by the way, about 77 with the nighttime lows in the mid 50s. So we're expecting things to be normal for the next few days. So let's take a look at our forecasts for the night tonight. So overcast skies with a low down to 58. Winds should be dying down as night falls. Tomorrow, look at cloudy skies in the morning, turning to sunshine in the afternoon and breezy with a high of 74. On Wednesday nights, should be mostly clear with a low down to 52. As we mentioned, Thursday looks pretty good right now, except for maybe a little breeze here and there with uh, high uh, and sunny weather. High temperature about 74 on Thursday. Uh, Friday looking for clouds to move in with a chance of showers in the afternoon. Still fairly warm with a high of 78. Showers in the morning on Saturday will turn to sunshine by the afternoon with high temperatures reaching up near 80. And then Sunday, finally by the end of the weekend, we're going to be back up to uh, temperatures in the 80s with mostly sunny skies. And that's the uh, harbinger of things to come as we look into the first part of next week. Well, we uh, are getting to our video of the day today. Here's a shot captured in the Manson area on Monday morning of a black bear seen running through a neighborhood near Morgan Owing School. The video was shared on the website lakechelannow.com. There's no immediate word from the State Department of Fish and Wildlife regarding the bear's whereabouts. If you uh, see this bear, well, just keep your distance. Now, the thing with bears and cougars, two different things. With a bear, you don't want to look it right in the eye. You want to just slowly back away and stay away from the bear. Don't run, just slowly back away and get out of its area. Now, if it's a cougar, you want to look it right in the eye and make it feel uncomfortable, make lots of noise, and make it know that you are not prey. Now, if you have a video of the day you'd like to see on the NCW Life Evening News, message us on our Facebook page uh, here at the NCW Life channel. Well, that's going to do it for our newscast tonight. For more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook, our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or give us a call at 888-NCWL. That's 888-6295. Also, keep it right here on the NCW Life channel tomorrow morning for Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with host Dan Kuntz and News Director Steve Hare. Thanks for joining us and have a great night. This is TV. This is TV Set Free. TV Everywhere from Localtel sets you free to watch what you want, where you want. Catch your favorite networks, including live TV, ready to watch on any web-connected device for no extra charge. That's TV Set Free. Enjoy the extra value Localtel delivers with TV Everywhere. Visit Localtel.net and sign up today. Hey there, Wenatchee. I'm Sean Lee, and I'm inviting you to check out the NCW Movie Guide to keep up on what movies are playing in our town. What's your auto mocha emergency? It's a Frappita Mocha with Whip. The espresso shakes are my most favorite because I can get any flavor. Uh, peanut butter chocolate Frappita. Definitely the espresso shakes. My favorite is the mocha for penis.
Peach Red Bull. Tacos Chava has something new. Customers at Tacos Chava say it's the best Mexican food around. Nachos, enchiladas, tortas, ensaladas, and introducing camarones in many styles. You'll love the fresh salsa bar with so much selection. Are you ready for Tacos Chava? Find them at two great locations, the Wenatchee Valley Mall and Eniat. Tacos Chava, tan delicioso.